this is Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with AllFreeKnitting.com to talk to you about making a mottled purple color using space dyeing in a pot. Now, dyeing yarn to get a purple, like I've shown here, has sometimes been described to be difficult because blue and red dyes absorb at different rates. But as you can see from the yarn that I'm holding here, I have never had an issue or seen this color separation. So what I want to try today is by using space dyeing in a pot, and since the dye will be added in different places, some of the dye will absorb to the yarn faster and the rest slower, so we might get some variation in the color we see, starting with um, McCormick's neon food coloring and the color purple, which contains both red and blue dye in it. So the water bath right here starts out with two cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar. And as I start heating up the dye bath, I'm going to add the yarn to the pot straight away. And the water is still cold. I would not recommend putting your hands in boiling water. We want there to be as little movement in the dye bath as possible when we actually start adding the dye to this. And so we have the vinegar in here to begin with so that way um, the dye will absorb the yarn correctly. Because the components that you need to dye yarn are acid, which is in the form of acetic acid from the vinegar. You need yarn, which we have here as yarn. <laughs> 100% wool fingering weight yarn. You need heat, which we're getting from the stove top, and you need dye, which we're going to have in this form of the food coloring. And so the plan is to bring the water to a soft simmer, and then we will add some of this purple dye to a few spots around the edge. So no matter what, we're going to end up with a mottled color. It's just the question is whether it'll be of a single tone or not. And if you don't have uh, the neon food coloring, you could take any other kind of food coloring, but rather than adding drops of different colors like we did in the space dyeing tutorial, um, you could mix the colors you want to add together before you add them, so then they can try to absorb at different rates. So once the dye bath is simmering, I will be back and we'll start trying to see if we can get some nice color separation from dyeing with purple. All right, the dye bath is now simmering and all of the water has been submerged. So I'm actually gonna turn off the heat and let the bubbles subside because I want there to be as little movement in the water as possible because we want the dye to try to stick at different regions. And so with the neon purple, I'm going to add some drops uh, to the dye bath. But first I'm actually going to, because um, you know, I made this short skein and I'm just going to try to bring the yarn closer and further away so that you, know, you get something that's a little more uniform. Okay, so now I have the eyedropper and I'm going to add drop of purple, drop of purple. Alright, so now I've added five drops of purple and you can see that it's already starting to bleed out from the first sight and so we'll see how this starts to absorb. But I actually think I'm going to add a little more going towards more the outside. Um, so it can be possible that I'm going to be adding too much dye, but we shall see. Okay, so I added a total of 10 drops possible that I've added too much, but you can already kind of see, um, if you look closely, that you look like it looks like that there's a little color separation. Um, looks like the center in each of these spots where I first added the yarn is fairly pink. And so 
Um, this is something that I've never tried before. I never tried to see if I can get um, a variation of, of the purple color. So we are just going to let this sit a bit and the colors will move around and will absorb to the yarn and we will see what we end up with. So I will be back in a bit after this has had time to absorb. Oh, but I guess before I leave, I will add that the reason why we're not going to get a uniform color, like in this case at all, and I'll say this yarn was dyed with um, combinations of blue and pink, so it was different to begin with. But in other times when we get a uniform color, the, we often add the dye to the dye bath first and then we stir it up. So the dye is uniform within the pot. So even if the colors absorb differently, they're absorbing at different rates, but all over the entire skein of yarn. Whereas here, we're having the yarn, um, the wool, or the dye is absorbing to the wool in different spots. And in that one spot right there, you can see we're getting some blue and some pink and some purple as the yarn spreads out. So I will be back in a bit. Ciao. All right, so the dye bath has run clear and We've allowed the pot to cool enough so that I can comfortably reach my hand in and touch it. And you can see there's still some dye left at the bottom, but with washing, um, that will come off of your pot. And if we look at our skein, you can see that we do in fact have multiple colors here. You can see bits of blue, um, lots of pink, and some purple. So we did in fact achieve the color separation that we hoped for. So we're now going to wash the yarn and I have some lukewarm water here and I'm going to add in some mild dish soap and we're going to wash our skein of water gently um, without a ton of agitation so we don't felt the yarn until the wash water runs clear. But you know, we did, as I said, we obtained beautiful mottled color here and separation because of the fact that blue and red dyes absorb to wool at different rates. So if we were to do this with just blue, we would have ended up, um, as we're going to do in a different tutorial, the single color, we would end up with a mottled effect with a single gradient. We would not have all of these different beautiful tones of blue, pink, and purple. So thank you for watching this tutorial on getting color separations from purple dyes and making mottled colored yarn with space dyeing. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and this video was brought to you by allfreeknitting.com. I know I signed off, but I wanted to come back real quickly because in all the dyeing tutorials they say that you wash the yarn until the water runs clear. But in previous cases, we've never had a lot of dye that comes off of the yarn. But now you can see that this water is pink. And so we will keep washing this yarn until no more pink dye comes out of the wool. So, happy dyeing yarn!